Hello, today John's going to show you how to repot this olive tree from the black container that it arrived in to this much nicer terracotta pot which will remind us of the Mediterranean on cold February days like today. Hello, welcome to our Somerset garden. I'm Melanie, one half of John Horsey Horticulture, helping you develop your gardening skills such as growing vegetables, taking cuttings, hardwood and softwood. Also showing you how to prune and much, much more. So if you enjoy learning those things, do consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to press the notification bell, which will just let you know every time we upload a new video. Uh, this tree, which was given to me by my children, has done very well all summer. It was in this pot, which is now outgrown, so we're repotting it. We've got a much bigger pot. Um, I've managed to get out of there with considerable difficulty, um, but it's now ready to go. I'm just going to put a bit of um, chard in the bottom, an old pot or something, and there's only one hole in this one, so I shall put the stems so that they cover the hole, but they still allow water to go underneath. Now, I do like to put a little bit of grit in the bottom as well, so I'm going to just pour a little bit of grit in there, which means that when the when the water works its way down, it gets into the grit and then it works its way out to the middle and uh, doesn't, doesn't hang around and, and uh, cause rotting of the roots, because the roots do have to be well drained. So there we are, we've got the pot ready. Um, compost. I, I, I like, especially for potting, I like to use John Innes. John Innes is based on, uh, on, on, on loam, it's based on um, uh, good you know, uh, loam which has come, come from soil, so it does have a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit heavier, but it usually keeps the nutrients a lot better and doesn't dry out quite as much as, as, as peat based or, or other, other composts. I've got a nice set, uh, sample here of John and his number, this is number three, a potting compost. Now I know number three does have nutrients in it already, but I'm a great believer in controlled release fertilizer. And this stuff, you may have seen it, uh, in, in certainly when you buy pots in the garden centre. It's these little, if you look, you see it has these little orange frills, we call them. But the beauty of these is that they all, uh, they, they contain a whole range of nutrients and they let it out as soon as it gets moist. So uh, it then, can, that release carries on right through the growing season. It carries on as long as it's moist and it's warm. And when it gets colder again, it slows down. It's not at all organic, I'm afraid, folks, but it does really control the nutrients that your plants want. And I always put a little bit of extra into Johninus, mix it in nice and thoroughly like that, and then I know that the plants will have um, food to keep them going when, uh, when, when they're growing up, growing on. Now, I don't think I'm going to need an awful lot more in the bottom here because it's quite high as it is. So I just put a handful in the bottom and then I'll try and see how much more we need to keep it at the right level. The reason I don't want to do it more than often is it's quite heavy. So up we go and in and down. And look at that, spot on. Couldn't have done it better if I tried. There we are, so that's right in the middle now. And all I need to do is to put more compost around it. I should have a prowl, I suppose, but I do rather like the feel of soil in the hands. And I'll just work my way around, letting this uh, compost fill in all the roots. I'm hoping they haven't dried out too much today, but olives are very uh, forgiving. They're used to hot, dry climates, as you know, and uh, this should come on really well. The control release fertilizer will help it. Make sure it's upright. Is that nice and upright? Yeah, that's fine, isn't it? And so I'll work my way around. Filling in around the roots. I'm a great believer in putting little pots, little bulbs in. Uh, especially if you could forget where they are. Uh, and then they come up and they give you a surprise in the spring. So the other day, I've got some of these orange croakers. You don't get many orange croakers. I do love orange, so I'm just going to put some of these in to give us a little bit of a pleasant surprise in the spring. So I'll put these up and pop them out. You can see they're actually quite ready to go. They should have been potted some while ago. Quite well, but they'll be okay, they'll be fine. Just pop them around the outside of the pot. 
I think I might do them in little groups of three rather than in one circle. If they haven't got a shoot on, I wouldn't bother them. They're probably no good. But at least at this stage, you can see that they're growing and you know they're going to be flowering before too long. So pop them all the way around the outside in little clusters. Some people like to put grit on the top, that'll make it look pretty. Um, but whatever you do now, just give it a, it will need a good water. Good water, then let it settle down. Um, I think this time of year I might leave it outside and hope it's all right. They'll take, they'll take a false with, with olives. Uh, it seems every time you uh, read about olives, they say they're more and more frost. Um, I would take them if, 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 if we have this persistent frost, but uh, I'm going to leave it out and enjoy it and enjoy the bulbs as well when they come up in the spring. Well, thank you very much for listening. We've so enjoyed having you in our Somerset garden. If you enjoyed that, do consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to press that all-important notification bell, which will just let you know every time we upload a new video. Until next time, thank you.